In this video, we're going to cover our first numerical integration technique. Now, this is a simple approximation to the area under a curve using rectangles. Now, in this example, we have a function in blue, and this function is y is equal to x squared, and I've only shown it for the positive x values. And we want to integrate this from the point 1 to the point 3. So we want the area under the curve from point 1 to point 3. Now what we can do is we can split the curve into segments. So if we define the number of segments by the value of n, you can see here that n is equal to 4. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 different rectangles. Now what we're going to do is add up the area of these rectangles to give us a pro an approximation to the area under the blue curve. But of course, it's not going to be exact because we've missed out, for example, this little section here and this little section. And we've got extra sections added in here and here. But you can see that if we were to increase the number of rectangles and make the length here smaller, then we could get a far better and finer approximation to the area. So let's see how we're going to generate this. We're going to have the integral from a to b of some function f of x by dx. So we're going to do this by adding up the area of the rectangles. Now we're going to have the distance here, so we can call this distance, if you like, our distance dx. So that's equivalent to a, a, a dx here. Now this distance is going to be the value b minus the value a divided by the number of rectangles n. So b minus a upon n will give us this little distance. So if we multiply this distance by the height of a rectangle, we'll get this area. And again, this distance by the height of this rectangle and so on and so forth. Then we will get a good approximation. Now the question is, how do we define the actual position where we cross the curve here? Now the most obvious thing we could do is we could choose the value here to be the center point. So we've got the center point here of this distance dx and we've got the center point here of this distance and here's the center point and the center point. So we're going to first of all have to work out what this point here is and then this point and this point and then this point. So we can work out this point here because it's going to be the value of a and then it's going to be half the distance from here to here. But we know the distance from here to here is b minus a upon n. So it means that this is going to be b minus a upon n times a half. So that will give us the first point, x1. Now in order to get the next point, which is going to be x2, we simply take the point here, x1, and we add on the distance n. And we know the distance n is given by b minus a upon n, and that gives us the next point, x2. And we get the point x3 by taking the point x2 and adding b minus a upon n. So this here is our little algorithm that we're going to use in order for us to generate the approximation to the area under a curve. So let's look at this particular example. The integral from 1 to 3 of x squared by dx. So this is going to be approximately equal to the dx, which is going to be the b minus a upon n. So in this case, it's going to be 3 minus 1 and we're going to use four blocks, so 3 minus 1 upon 4. And then the values here, f of x1, f of x2, we're going to use the function here, x squared. So it's going to be the a plus a half b minus a upon n, which in this instance is 5 upon 4. So we take 5 upon 4 and then we square it. So in effect, the 5 upon 4 is this point here. And when we square it, we get this point here. So that's going to give us the height. So we're multiplying the height here with the width to give us this area. 
and we do the same for the next value for x2 and then x3. Now whenever we work through all of this, we'll get the final answer, which is 8.625. So let's look at this in our graphical calculator. We draw our function y is equal to x squared. We put in our lower limit of integration, a equals 1. Our upper limit of integration, b is equal to 3. We then split this distance into four equally spaced rectangles. We get the height of the rectangle from the center point of each of these. And whenever we work through the integration, the actual area is 8.667. Now, whenever we go through our rectangular integration, we're going to get a value of 8.625 as an approximation. So I've added in the mathematics here as a, a reminder. Now we have the algorithm here at the top. And whenever we do the actual integration here, we're going to get the value 8.667. And whenever we work through the integration using the uh, rectangular approximation, we're going to get the result here, 8.625. So let's have a look at this within our assembly language. This is the numerical integration algorithm written in our assembly language. I've put a note at the top here describing the actual algorithm. First of all, we work out the value b minus a upon n, which in effect is our dx. I then go ahead and work out the value for the first x point, which is x1, which is a plus b minus a upon 2n. I then put that value into the floating point, uh, the fixed point math power function. So we're going to work out the value x1, in this case it's going to be squared. We then go through and we generate all of the other values. So we take the value for our x1 and we add on our little dx and then we square it. And then we add on the little dx again and then square it. And we run through and we continually add up these values and we save them in a running total and register R3. Now, whenever we're finished that, in the end, we have to take all of those values and multiply them by the value dx, which is our b minus a upon n. So we do that at this point here. And that, in effect, is the algorithm finished. So you can see here at the bottom, we've got all of our variables. So we've got the value b, in this instance, is 3, the value of a, which is 1, the value for our n, which is the number of rectangles, is 4. And we've got these other values here, which we use in order to generate the power um, ax squared. And you can see here that with this example, the with four intervals, we should get 8.625, which in our fixed point number system is uh, 0 cross uh, 0, 8, a0. So let's load this into the machine. We will run it and see whether we get this value. I have assembled the code and loaded it into the RAM. So that's the simulation now running. And you can see that the ROM and the RAM are being accessed. And if you drop down into the control section, you can see all of the sets and enables being controlled via the microcoded ROM. So I will fast forward this to the very end and we'll see what the final result is. Now the simulation has finished and we have an exact answer in register R3, which is 08A0. So this is an exact answer of 8.625. So we are able to perform numerical integration for simple polynomial functions 
on our CPU. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.